Auto technology is shaping up as the, as the big story at this year's Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Samsung's U.S.-based Harman is making its play with an advanced driving platform for autonomous vehicles. Joining us now from CES is Harman President and CEO Dinesh Paliwal. Dinesh, great to see you there from Las Vegas. And I got to say, you know, it's, the, the CES is starting to sound like uh, the Detroit Auto Show with so much focus on autonomous vehicles. You're spot on. Detroit uh, Auto Show and CES. In fact, we're starting to wonder that why should they not converge? But anyhow, Consumer Electronics Show has become Car Electronics Show. I'm very excited. Uh, the con convergence of technologies to create the connected experience here is seen everywhere. I've gone around the whole show. I, I, I can imagine. Okay, let's talk about what you unveiled uh, now uh, as you are under the umbrella of Samsung. Tell me a bit more about this, basically this modular digital cockpit almost that you're developing for cars, the driveline platform. Uh, exactly what is this about? Right, so we've been part of Samsung for not even one year yet, but uh, incredible collaboration has produced these three incredible innovation. We launched, these are production ready. In fact, uh, we launched Driveline, that is the world's first open platform, open source, open platform for autonomous driving. So that means you can bring in signals from high definition cameras around the cars, the LiDAR, the other sensors, and you can uh, integrate them software so you create First, highly automated experience, which will help security and safety, mm -hmm. leading up to all the way autonomous. So that's one. Number two, which is, I think, very, very important part of autonomous, is 5G technology. Betty, as you know, 5G is 100 times faster than current 4G or LTE. And with, with 5G, we'll be able to really take data from car to car and car to infrastructure. So this will really help industry leapfrog the autonomous experience and development. And the third we have launched is uh, digital cockpit. So digital cockpit is basically converging multitude of fragmented islands of information, whether it's instrument cluster, what have you, right. still complying with the automotive security. So there where we have brought in the Samsung's great technology of OLED and quantum LED and, and migrated with, with the full 3D and 2D impact. Uh, but I want to talk, the, the, certainly there's a lot of questions with each of those that you outlined, Dinesh, but let's talk about the first part, which is that open platform uh, uh, in, in cars. I mean, I, I thought Mobileye pretty much had the, had the market stamp on that, right? How do you plan on making this, uh, making any inroads in a market that Mobileye, which was bought by Intel, uh, you know, they've got, they're the dominant player in this field. Uh, that is absolutely right. Mobileye was the first to enter in this market. Uh, by 2030, automotive industry would be $6.7 trillion. And the autonomous market right now, in terms of revenue, is uh, single digit billion dollars. So we are in the infancy, and the, what we have with Mobileye Intel is a platform which is actually very good, but it's totally cl a closed platform. So it doesn't allow the developer community to come participate. So what we have launched is an open source, open platform. It's okay. still complying with all the requirement, but this, we will actually unleash and leverage the multitude of developers so that they can populate and actually expedite the development of autonomous driving experience. Uh, who do you expect are going to be customers for you with, for, with these new platforms that you're uh, oh, unveiling? Who are, you, who are going to be your customers? Uh, we are going to be targeting all our customers, frankly. We deal with all, uh, all automotive customers. All the Germans are big customers of ours. And we are obviously in Japan, Asia, China. China is actually will be an early mover advantage because Chinese customers are really leapfrogging. They, are, they, they have the uh, appetite for these new technology. They're not going to wait for it to be uh, first implemented in high-end luxury cars. And of course, American customers. So we had in the last two days, Barry, we had CEO level customers from, from Europe, Asia, and, and, and Americas, obviously, great interest because these guys want optionality. Mm. They wanted to have open source so they can participate with modular, scalable, automotive, at, autonomous experience. So I'm actually very, personally very excited, not because it's Harman or Samsung, as an industry spokesperson. Industry was waiting for 
open platform to come out, and now we need to make it expand that, expand on that. Uh, Dinesh, you know, uh, I, I, I hear all of this stuff and, and I see all of these pictures and they look incredible. I mean, we're basically turning our cars into, um, into entertainment centers, computers. Uh, but I also worry, I mean, I can barely walk down the sidewalk here in New York and not bump into someone because I'm so distracted by my phone. Uh, isn't there a concern that with all of this capability in your cars, we're making them actually less safe? That's a very genuine concern, and we all as a consumers uh, cons are, are concerned about that. The, way, the only way you can solve it is make it as intuitive and make it voice-enabled, gesture-enabled, and cognitive-enabled. That's exactly what, where we're spending our money and dollars. So our digital cockpit, actually, you can speak to it. You can speak to it using uh, Google intelligence uh, home, or you can use Amazon or Bixby, uh, which is Samsung's voice-enabled interface. So voice would be a big deal. Up until now, I've been in, the, in automotive industry a long time. Voice has not been mature platform, but I think we are seeing now exponential developments. The voice would be one, the cognitive, the retina-based. So less personal intervention in dealing with knobs and looking around is the way to go, and digital cockpit is really very big step forward in that direction. Yeah, uh, Dinesh, this is Yvonne in, in Hong Kong. Uh, you know, just tell a little, little, little bit about the development of connectivity and the, the promises that you've had maybe since 1998. I mean, how has that evolved over the years to what you're seeing in the innovation now? And what's the risk? So, so obviously, any new development you do has its own risk. The number one risk I see that we jump too fast in connecting cars and without worrying about cybersecurity and the safety compliance issue, I really care for that because once you bring in the big pipe of 5G, now you're also going to invite undesired and unintended intruders in the car. So cybersecurity needs to be talked about it a lot. Uh, banking is secure, defense is secure, but automotive industry is not. It was not designed that way. So that's the concern, that's the risk. And you also we need to worry about the car is not your cell phone or smart device. It is life and death. So we understand that at Harman, and that's one reason why Samsung brought Harman under. So I think we will use that experience to minimize those risky factors. But that's another reason why when people get excited, autonomous car, it's a journey. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Right. It's a multi-year process. We have to test these things here. Yeah. Uh, Dinesh, just really quickly, you know, uh, we've been asking many of the CEOs when they're taking a broader look at the, at the world. I know you're focused so much on your technology. Um, in terms of the, what you're seeing and talking to customers around the world, what's the biggest risk? right now, the biggest global risk in 2018 in your view? I think biggest global risk uh, is what you all talk at your network, I read and listen carefully, is the trade war and we do not want that because technology has no boundaries. Innovation, collaboration needs no boundaries. So look at Harman and Samsung. I mean, we are innovating immensely in China and markets like China is our biggest market opportunity, not just to develop, but as consumers for automobile, for consumer electronics, for professional, uh, for enterprise. And India is also emerging market for us, very big opportunity for us. So we do not want protectionism. That's the only thing I worry about. I think innovation will always find ways to penetrate the boundaries. All right, Dinesh, thank you so much. Dinesh Palawal, the Harman president and CEO, joining us from CES.